Welcome to the DigiGo training video on how to build your proposal. Firstly, you'll start by logging in as usual, and to get used to the system, please refer to our DigiGo Basics video first. Once you're on your main screen, please feel free to navigate your way over to the left-hand side menu, over to Proposals, and click Add New Proposal. From here, you can give your proposal a title, and then click Add New Proposal. Once your proposal has successfully been created, you'll see a little green bar appear up the top, and you can go ahead and click the blue here button, which will now open the proposal. This will now open up our proposal and as you can see, you've been left with a nice empty screen here. So what we're gonna do is go through step by step and navigate our way through the tabs up the top and fill in the details to create our proposal. The first step I recommend doing is jumping straight into the second tab, the details tab, and filling in the basic details. All of these fields are optional. Um, so if you don't have a reference number here, for example, you don't need to put one in. So for today, we'll just throw in some testing data. Okay. We always need a trip start date. And you can use that by clicking in the box and finding a date using the calendar tool. You can also select the time here if you wish. That'll open up and you can use the scroll bars to select a time or you can easily click on the numbers and quickly select one. Creating passengers is a two-step process. What you'll first need to do is add the person to the Digigo database, that's step one, and the second step will be to add them to your proposal. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the Add New Person button. We're then going to create that customer name in the system. All of the data is optional, but we do recommend always having a first and last name. So I'm gonna add that person in. Now, if John is traveling with his lovely wife, Jane, I also wanna add Jane as well. Okay, now if John and Jane were traveling with kids, obviously we would continue to go until we uh, had all of the passenger names entered. Once done, you can click close on that box. Those names have now been added to the Digigo database. So now what we need to do is search for those names and add them to our proposal. So the first thing we're going to do is come up to the lead passenger square. We're gonna start typing John's name. There he is there. So we're going to add him on. You can now see that we have successfully added our lead passenger by the fact that it's turned into a blue box, okay? What we're then going to do is use the second box down, search people, to now go and find John's lovely wife, Jane. Once located, we're going to hit select, and you'll notice now that Jane's name has now appeared in the additional passengers. Now, again, if John and Jane are traveling with children or another couple, for example, any names that we just added, we would continue to search for in this field, and any additional passenger names would now drop down into the additional passengers drop down. Okay, it's only the lead passenger that will appear in blue. From here, you've got the option to then let the system know how many adults are traveling and how many children are traveling. Again, completely optional. And if you're using DigiGo for a quoting system, you can also estimate your quotes so that if you're ever using the screen, uh, you can always revert back to see what your customers have let you know in terms of budget. Again, completely optional. What you can then do is choose a consultant. I'm generally you, but if you're in charge of your documents, you might be doing it on behalf of somebody else. Once you're logged into your own company, when you drop this down, there'll be a list of agents available for you. You can then provide your proposal with a status. Choose a template. Okay, 
Present as and relationship access is a more advanced tool. If you'd like to know more about these two sections, please refer to our additional training video. You can also opt to change the language in this section and the currency. Okay. And we've also got some additional features down here, such as entry sorting, which can also be controlled via the entries tab or the proposal PDF section. This controls what you see on your PDF. So if you'd like your agent intro page to appear, you can go ahead and click that. If you'd like a notes page to appear, you can add that in as well. And if you'd like to remove price and terms, you just need to unclick that. Once you're happy with what you've got, go ahead and click save down the bottom. Usually just take a moment to refresh. And once done, and now all of our details are filled in correctly, we can now start adding in our entries. So for today's training purposes, we'll show you individually how to add an example of each entry type. So using the quick build section in the blue box, we're going to drop down the entry type, and today we'll select transport. In the start, date, and time field, we can click inside of that box, navigate our way to the starting date, And you can also change the time again as well using the little clock on your calendar. A couple of options, use the scroll or simply click. You can then choose your transport type. So today we'll just put in a flight and we can now give our flight an entry title. This can be whatever you choose. And then go across and click add entry. you'll now see our first transport starting to appear there. What we might also like to do is add in an alternate transport entry. Okay, just to show you the varying types. The date might be the same, but of course I might opt to change the time here. And I'll add in a private transfer. To hotel and we'll add that entry. We might then like to go ahead and add in a destination page. Now the best destination products to use are owned by Digigo Destinations or you can always use one owned by yourself as well. Okay so the date is still going to be the same but for this example I'm going to go ahead and put in a zero time. Now, if a zero time is listed on your proposal, the date will appear, but the time will not. So if you don't want to display time, simply enter the zero, zero. You can see now the fields have changed up the top from when we entered our transport entries. And you can see now that it's asking for us to search for a product. Now, all you need to do in the product field is type in a few keywords. And you'll see here, Digio is hard thinking. And then it'll give us a list of options. Now you can see that I've started to search for Melbourne and everything that's relatable to my search has appeared in blue. Okay, so what I'm looking for mainly here is just Melbourne. And I can see that it's owned by Digigo Destination, so I know it's going to be a beautiful product for destinations. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select that product and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add that entry. I might then want to add in a hotel, some form of accommodation. So let's select accommodation. Again, the date might be the same, but I'll change that to a check-in time. If you know the hotel name, you're more than welcome to start typing the hotel name. Oh, there we go. All right, if you're not sure of the hotel name, you're more than welcome to try another search, which is the city or area that they're staying in, and then you can select from our database. So you'll see here, we've got a whole lot of apartments or hotels, all in the location of Melbourne. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and select the Grand Hyatt today. We can then opt to choose a product option, which is a room type. Now, if you find that the room type you're using is not listed, don't panic. Uh, you do have the option to add that in at a later stage, and I will show you how to do that. So today, let's just add in the Deluxe King, and I'll add the entry. We might also like to go ahead and add in a tour. That might be the day two. We'll change that to 10 a.m. 10 Okay. Again, if you're not sure of the exact tour name, go ahead and search for the area. And you can see a whole range of tours that we've got available. We might choose the afternoon, afternoon Lanes and Arcade Tour today. Add that one in. And the second last entry type I'll show you is multi-day. Okay, this might start on June 3. Again, with our search. And you'll see now all of our multi-day tours are appearing. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose the two-day Great Ocean Road and Phillip Island tour. And add that entry. And the very last entry type that I'll show you how to use is our custom entry. So dropping down our entry type, you'll see a custom note here. We might put that on day six. And we'll remove a time. Now you can see now it's not asking us to choose a product, it's asking us to create a title, exactly how our transport entries did. So we might put day at leisure or some form of a note, anything that you choose here. So just a quick recap with our entry types. Anything that is a destination, accommodation, tour or multi-day tour entry type, you'll need to select a product from the Digigo database. That ensures that you get a beautiful page with beautiful imagery. Now your transport entry types and your custom entry types, these only appear in your snapshot. So there's no need to choose a product from the Digigo database. This is just basically text, okay? So once we've started to build out our proposal, as you can see, we've done an example of each entry type here. You can go ahead using the orange button and you can confirm that if you like. So just giving that a little bit of a click just confirms that entry. You don't need to do it, that's completely optional and for your preference. You've also got the option, if you're ever unsure of how that product looks and whether you've selected the right product, you can go ahead and click the little green e-doc button here. And that'll give you a bit of a preview of the images that Digigo has behind that product. So you can see here, this is the description that we're going to get. These are the images that'll come through for us. Any videos, maps, etc. So if you decide that those images aren't quite right or you're after something a little bit different, that's when you'd be able to use your little green pencil icon. You'd be able to open that one up and you can either choose to click it to open it on the same page or open in a new tab. Simply come into where your product is that you've selected it, remove it, and then using this um, top bar again, you can search for a new product. So just lastly, you'll notice that this button here is gray. This is to manage your product. Now in today's case, these are all supplier owned products. So the button here is gray, meaning you are unable to edit that product. Uh, if it is blue, it means that your company owns that product and you can change the images, change the content to your heart's desire. And of course, the little red brin, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you wanted to remove a service line, simply go ahead and click that and that will remove it. Okay, so once we've applied all of our entries or added in and built out our proposal, the next thing we wanna do is go through and edit our entries. Now there are actually three ways that we can edit an entry. 
First up is the nice easy one and that's just clicking on the entry to drop it down. Now this is really handy if you're just looking to change a date. Let's say for example here with the hotel we just want to add a checkout date. You can click in that box and we'll now do a checkout and time. You might also like to add a reference number here or anything else. Once you're happy with your quick edit, go ahead and click save and that box will then close. The second option you can do is come into copy edit. So your third tab across copy edit. What you might like to do once you click that is look at the fields. So we might want to look at our title, our description and our short description fields. We might want to look at all of our entry types and click generate. What this tool essentially does is allows us to look at all of our entries and all of our data on one screen. Once you get used to Digigo, this is a really quick and effective way of changing all of your entries or editing, editing them in all in one place. Okay, so you can add on any text that you like here. So we might want to change that room type. Okay, once we're done, we can hit save all. And you'll see the boxes start to light up green to say that they're being saved. You can also have the option to choose and save individually. If you'd like to learn more about the copy edit tab, please feel free to watch our training video for copy edit, where we'll go a little bit more in depth than what I have today. Now your last option in terms of editing, so again, you've got the drop down, you've got the copy edit, or you've got the green pencil, which is our edit full entry. So when you're learning to use Digigo, I strongly recommend using this one first. So what we'll do is we'll go straight into our first entry, which is Melbourne, and we'll open that up. Okay, so now we're inside of this entry, you'll start to see all the tools that we can do. So we can add in some notes if we want, we can change the title. So the product's given us a rough guide of uh, Melbourne. You might like to change this to City of Melbourne or something like that. Virtually every field that you see here will appear on your document. So you've got full control of all of the editing. You can also see here that Digigo has provided you with a description. You can use the little scroll to have a look through or you can use the little grey pop out button and you can fully see what we've got here. Now you for argument's sake might have a little bit of a read through and realise that this doesn't apply or maybe you'd like to add your own little saying in there as well. So again fully editable you can do absolutely anything you want in this, this section. Once you're happy copy back to page. If you accidentally make a mistake and realise you've deleted everything and you'd like to get the description back, go ahead and click the green Get Content button. What that will do is speak directly to the Digigo product and pull all of that content back in. So again, just a quick run through. The description field will appear on your product pages and your short description snapshot, chat, snapshot sorry, will just appear in the snapshot section of your PDF. You have the chance to add inclusions, exclusions, general notes, and cancellation policy. Now the little pink button here is our translate tool. Now of course, back on our details tab, we selected English as the main language. If we were to choose Spanish, we could then use our translate tool and it will translate the text that's in here into Spanish using a Google Translate. Once you're happy with all of the changes, go ahead and click save. You can then use the little toggles up the top to go through to your next entries. Okay, so now we're at our flight. Okay, so Digigo has given us some helpful hints straight away. So it's asking us what is the pickup airport and what is the drop off airport. If you don't want to put those there, you can simply remove those. They will leave them in so I can show you on the PDF how they will look. So just some notes. And we might also like to put a landing time in here as well.
Okay. So we've got our title. Now again, transport entries only appear in the snapshot, therefore you do not need a description for these entry types. And again, that is a transport entry. Again, Digigo has given you some uh, guidelines here of some information you might like to fill in. Now you don't have to use all of these. Uh, you can put your own wording in there. You can do whatever you like. Okay, so I'm gonna just take out departure and arrival today. I might put in that this is a Pontus. Flight duration might be one hour. 30 minutes, some seats, and I'm going to remove meal and baggage allowance as well. Okay. It's up to you what you'd like to put in there. You might also like to come across, across to the class and put in economy, business. You might also have a confirmation reference in there as well. Once I'm happy with my editing, again, we're going to go ahead and click save and navigate to the next entry. So you can see here, we're just going through one by one, doing a little bit of a check. Now we have a transfer, which is gonna work very similar to our flight entry, okay? And in this case, we're going actually from the airport to the hotel. So Digigo has given us some helpful hints. However, they are around the wrong way. So I'm just going to remove those for today. Okay, purely because we've got it written in the title as well. You can opt to put in a finish date. Okay, we've got here, please be ready and waiting at your location 10 minutes prior to pick up. Um, you know, you might like to say, please meet at the domestic lounge. Your driver will be holding a sign. Whatever you'd like to put in there, completely optional. And a little general note. As an example. Once you're happy with the data, go ahead and click save. And again, we'll go to our next entry. Now we're in a hotel, this is great. We've got our check-in and check-out date. Now, although you'll notice here that you've got an alternate check-in and check-out field, as long as there's information in the start and finish, this field isn't actually required. It's just a duplication if you'd like to put more data in. Okay, so Grand Hyatt Melbourne, we're staying in a standard deluxe king. We might like to add that breakfast is concluded. We might do a quick read through and make sure we're happy with that description. If we're not, again, you can go ahead and change it. And we're also happy with the short description as well. Okay. Go ahead and click save. And again, add in whatever information you like into inclusions exclusions, cancellation, general notes, all those fields are available for you. And if you enter information in there, it will appear on your documents. Our next entry is our tour. Works very similar to the way our others work. Now, Digigo does pull through the supplier name into the title field. If you don't wanna put the supplier in there because it's not relevant, you don't have to. Okay, you can put in some inclusions if you like. We've got a little bit of a city uh, description, sorry, it's very short, you might like to add some more. Okay. Okay. Now our multi-day entry here is two days, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in a finish date for this one. Okay, we don't really need to put in there about bunny up to us if we don't want. You can have a read through all of the description, add in more, you can add less, whatever you choose. And our very last entry for today is our custom entry. Custom entries are the equivalent of a note field. So they're just a quick note. Really, the only things you need here is a title and a short description. So I've just made a note that this is just a day at leisure.
Okay. All right, so you'll see now we won't be able to go any further. We're now officially at the end of our all of our entry. So what we can do now is go back to our main screen. We've now done all of the entries. We've updated all of the details. We've edited all of our entries. So now we can start going through the rest of the tabs. First one is price and terms. Okay. Now, if you do have some defaults stored, you can use these buttons to put in your template defaults. If you'd like to know more about template defaults, please speak to us. Uh, we can show you how to set those up underneath the company. Okay. Okay, looks like, there we go. Got some defaults stored, just to give you an example. So the price heading is usually uh, where you would put in the total price, as you can see here. And price description just sort of gives you a, a brief run through. Again, you can leave these fields empty if you don't want them. And you can simply come over to your details section and underneath your PDF section, just remove the pricing tab. All right, once we're happy with the data that we've got in our price, we can hit save. We can then do the same thing with our terms and conditions. I'm just going to import company defaults. Okay, and save. And inclusions and exclusions, the same thing. So let's just put in the defaults today. Now, obviously, if you don't have any defaults set up, then these would these buttons here would not work. You've also got the option to manually type in whatever you need in these fields as well. Okay, that's that done. Moving on to financials. Now, financials is there's usually a graph here, and I'll give it a bit of a refresh if it's coming up for us. It's usually more of an advanced tool. When you're learning to use Digigo, I would recommend sticking to the price and terms section. Um, if you'd like to know more about the financials, please come through to us and we'll show you how to set that up. Okay, just quickly today, so you can get a rough idea of how that would look on your documents. Uh, you've got individual cell lines here based on per entry. So if you really wanna give your client a breakdown of cost, simply come in here. Uh, private transfer, we might like to say this costs $80. You can also add in margins and sell prices if you like. Uh, the hotel might be $420. And this tour here, $45. Okay, now the ones that you don't want to put any information in, you can just leave that blank. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and hit save. Now there's lots of little things you can do over in this section. You can apply payments, you can show currencies, you can show discounts and calculate so that it appears on your document. But it's very important that you speak to us first to make sure that your PDF is equipped, as you can see here, to handle the financial section, okay? If it's not, which obviously the example I'm in today is not, you'll get a nice little error here advising you to speak to us. Okay, if you're having problems with financials, feel free to use the pricing section. All right, the next tab we'd like to use is the welcome. Now the welcome is everything that is on the front page of your PDF. So you might like to come in and create a nice little welcome message. You might also have company defaults already set up so that you could import those as you can see here. Okay. Put that in today and we might like to put in just a little image. Now with when using Digigo you'll see here that any recently used images are left down here so you can quickly select those if you want. If there's nothing here you've recently used that you'd like to use, use feel free to click inside of the blue dotted box head on over to your own computer your own files and you can find one that's a little bit more applicable. All right, so I might go in and we might add in this one here today. Oh, let's go this one. Once we've selected the image, you'll see a white bar. 
what you need to do is then click add image and you'll start to see that turn gray as it slowly loads that image for us. There we go. Once we're happy with everything that is in here, go ahead and click save. We'll then navigate to our about section. Now the about page is completely optional, but you might like to put a little bit about yourself in here, a little bit about your company, why they should choose your company, or you can leave it blank. Today, I'll see if I've got any defaults stored and we can just put those in. Nope, doesn't look like we've got any details, so we can do a rough example. Um, you might like to then go la, 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 whatever you'd like to put in there. Okay, moving on. Now the calendar and the trip preferences, you can completely leave those. They're agent tools. You can use them if you like. It's simply just going to give you a little bit of a uh, quick snapshot of what everything is looking like. So you can see here July 1, these are the times and this is what's going on. Just an agent tool. This doesn't appear on your documentation in any way, shape or form. It's just an agent tool for you. And the same goes with trip preferences simply a way for you to store the notes from your client uh, so you could use their preferences later on. Now the map tab does however appear on your uh, e-presentation so what we're going to do is just click load proposal map Set a moment to load And this will just load all of our map markers based on our actual trip. So you can see here the tour starts here, here's the destination, hotel, and so on and so forth. Now the map is fully um, interactive, so we might like to remove the Melbourne map marker. Let's just delete that. So you click it, remove. And we might only like to show the hotel or the tours that we're doing. Okay, again, you've also got the option if you wanted to add something in. Maybe something of um, interest. There it is, and add marker. And you can see here now that that's just added that marker in. So we'll delete that. You'll also see the grey box, you can zoom in or zoom out. Once you're happy with your zoomed in or zoomed out location, go ahead and click the little blue disc and save the map position as that is the position that will appear on your e-presentation. Once you're happy with your map, what we're going to do now is get ready to start downloading our documents. So navigate to the final tab of Client Documents. Firstly, go into your e-presentations using the new e-presentation e version and click that. The e-presentation link is a really, really good one to get in the habit of sending to your clients. And the reason for that is you actually have access to download the app and view your PDF on this proposal. Okay. So you've got here view in eDocs, which was ring. We've got view in app as well. And you've also got your links here to download the app. So there's our beautiful welcome image, uh, our passengers and our welcome letter. Our about tab that we created. So all the information again, that is under your about section will appear here. Navigate our way to the snapshot. And as you can see here, all of the little short snapshot descriptions that we went through when we were editing our entries will appear here. And then any additional information, reference numbers or class, you can click on and you'll notice that they'll appear. Okay. You can also opt to click on the read more link, which will open a new tab and go into a little bit more detail.
There we go. And here we can look at our images, videos, locations, and anything else that we have against those products. Okay, so the itinerary is just a longer version. So it'll show all of our long descriptions that we recently did. Price is pretty self-explanatory, everything that is under that price tab. Yeah, will appear here. So you can see our inclusions are here, exclusions. Price heading has appeared in bold and everything else follows. Same with the terms and conditions, all of that data will appear here. The media tab is uh, just a collection of all of the entry types. So absolutely all of the entries here Digigo will at random select about two to three images from those products and collate them in here. So obviously once you've got a really big itinerary, a lot more images will appear. And very lastly, our map. So stemming from our map tab, this beautiful map that we've just put together, you can see this here. And that's your e-presentation. So if you'd like to go ahead now and download a PDF, we always recommend using the green button, the low res PDF. This is perfectly acceptable for digital. If you're sending it to a printer, uh, that's when we would recommend using the high res button. However, please be aware it does take some time to download um, and it's quite a large file. So you might have trouble sending this as a PDF through to your clients. So it might take about a moment or two to just download that PDF. It's usually Digigo hard at work putting together all of those images and all of that content we've just created. There we go. So a couple of options. We've got a clickable link here, right? So we can go ahead and we can click on that link. Open up our PDF. And you'll now see everything we've done, all that welcome information, everything on our snapshot. So again, if you recall for our flight, when we went in and we put in the airline, we put the flight duration and the seats, that's all appearing here. Okay, little custom notes that we've entered in, any inclusions that we added you'll start to see it all appear now. So if there's something you'd like to edit or add, feel free to come back over to your entries. You can pinpoint that exact entry, open it up, and maybe you'd like to remove this, add something else in, edit it to your heart's content, and then you can download another PDF. If you'd like to look at everything in bulk, again, as we mentioned earlier, that's where we recommend the copy edit tool. So we might like to look at all of the inclusions, for example, against all of our entries. All right, now we start to get into our beautiful product pages. So here's our beautiful destination page. So destination, we are here all that information. And remember, you've got full control over this if you'd like to edit it. Our beautiful hotel, there's the room type that we entered in ourselves. Confirmation, check-in, check-out dates are appearing, address, any inclusions. Our tour. There's plenty of room there to add more information if we wanted to. And we've got our multi-day, which will go over two pages. Now, if you decide here, for example, you can see this particular tour has gone over two pages due to the length of the content. If you decide, you know what, I really don't want this second page just for four, four lines of text. What you might like to do is simply come back over, open up your entry, open up the description, and you might like to edit it by, you know, a couple of options. You could simplify by moving a couple of paragraphs up, removing a paragraph, whatever you'd like to do. So those nice three little paragraphs there, that's a good guide to use. If you were to rerun your PDF, this would now appear on one page only. Just a bit of a helpful tip there for you. 
Now coming into our price, remember I mentioned about the financials section. When we use the financials table, it will appear in a table form on our price as long as you've been set up to handle that. You'll see our inclusions, exclusions, price headers, and price information. Now, if we didn't use the financials tab and didn't put those prices in the table, which is what we did here, if this was all left at zero, 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 then of course this table here wouldn't appear. And then we go into our terms and conditions. And of course I did add on that uh, travel designer or a agent summary page. So usually you've got a beautiful profile, um, you know, picture a little bit about your company and things like that if you wanted to do that. If you didn't want that page to appear, remember all we need to do is go back to our details tab, drop down our PDF visibility. Now if you ever run any, into any issues there, just give your screen a little bit of a refresh. That a moment to load. Drop that down and you can go ahead and remove that page. Just as simple as that. And that is how we create our proposals. So again, you've also got your Tripigo app details down the bottom here, which you can either email to your client or to yourself or send it via text. What they'll need to do is just follow the link to download the app. But again, if you send them the e-presentation link, they've got the option to download here and it will come with instructions on how to do so. We do have a video and more tutorials on the app if you'd like to find out more information. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Uh, lastly, we'd just like to show you our very new flipbook. So uh, alternatively, you can click the PDF link to bring you to this, or you're more than welcome to click my flipbook. And you'll see here, this will give you a really good page turner for your clients. There you go. So they're the options we offer. If there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to us via our live help button at any time. Um, alternatively, feel, please feel free to watch more of our tutorial videos or, of course, uh, navigate your way over to our knowledge base where you can read up on more articles. Thanks for learning with us today.